more diddly awning. Morning, sir. You all right? Not bad, how are you doing? It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, isn't it? It's been like, what is it, two weeks since we caught up? It feels like it, yeah. Did we catch up last Monday when it, I was here before I went? Just before you went? Just before I went. To for Espana. work, yeah. It was a holiday. Kate tells me I need to own it because I keep saying, oh, it's work, isn't it, riding a bike? And she's <laughs> like, no, it's a holiday. So there you go, love. I went on holiday. <laughs> been on your holly bobs. Now I've said that, it's like, right, so you've been on holiday. Yeah. You watch me now, I get a load of crap for that. So let us uh, peruse the intro that is marvellously put together by Davla. And I'll see it on to the other side. Woo! <laughs> So this is like the parts that have turned up while I've been off. So we got a couple of service kits, um, a load of repair kits for different things. We can open up some Dodson goodies if you want. Oh, Dodson, goodness, yeah. Uh, we got a pair of exhaust manifolds, a front scuttle, some exhausts. So just like the punishment of being away now is coming back and there being a hundred emails and just trying to piece together all the jobs of what's what yeah um so that's okay uh sam's in doing some dents on jordan's van uh jordan is doing an m60 eed. So uh, these things are rapid aren't they electric yeah this is probably one of the only electric cars all electric cars i think of buying because on the inside it looks like a car yep um, none of this test. 16 3.8 is not too shy either. No, none but of these. It's still electric. Hey, I know. Like, look how fake the grill is. It's a sticker. Yep. Like, if you're going to put a sticker on it, put boobies on it or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, they look like a car inside. Uh, Boyo has just had rear arms done, so we got a, that's got a wheel alignment now. That's the last job on it. So that's Devon's car. Done quite a bit on this, to be fair. A tidy one, that. Yeah, so he's had a lot of work. Uh, Carl's on with pulling the head off the RSQ3 because that's got valve damage. Uh, the heads are finished on the 650. We've just got to go and get them, but we need to wait. Carl's sorting the crank out out of Adams because while I've been off, Carl's made a mess. So this is Adams. Uh, this is the one that uh, had rod knock. So Carl pulled the engine, stripped the engine. He's now got to start sorting everything out so we can reassemble it. But if we go, I have never, genuinely, never seen uh, a R8 sort of have bearings in such poor condition. Like where the oil's oxidized, look, it's just... Yeah, let me just uh, change my focus area. The bear. There we go. Zoom. Wow. Yeah. So you can see where it's all started to take the top coating off. Yep. This one's the same. And it looks like milky oil on it, but it's not. It's actually taking the top layer off. And so what's happened then with those, uh, and a lot of the bearings are the same. Uh, like, there you go. That's the opposite end of the engine. Yeah, they've done the same. It's almost like there was... Uh, either the oil's degraded or like there was water in the oil and that the yep. water's um, uh, sort of damaged the, damaged the bearings. Uh, but what's happened is where then it's got a cavity and the oil's been able to sink into the cavity, it's grabbed the crank, grabbed all the bearing and it had spun the bearings in the, in the rods. So instead of being across the parting line of the rod like that, it's spun them. Look, you can see where it snapped the tab off. The locating tab. Yeah, yeah. Spun on the rod. And I gotta be fair, like the crank looks mint, doesn't it? Like for how bad it was, like the crank is there's some gentle brush marks. They look like scotch bright marks on the crank. So we'll get the crank polished and measured up and make sure it's alright. But at the minute, I wouldn't trust the rods. Once you've spun a bearing in a rod, you've got to throw the rods away. So we'll do a set of rods full set of bearings on the rods and mains, 
polish your crank, set of rings, you've got the pistons out, you may as well put a set of rings in it. Yep. An oil pump and an oil cooler. And I think that's about it. But that is, uh, honestly, I have never, I've seen a lot of bearings do some weird things, but I've never seen them do that. And is this like ticking a big mileage? What's it no, 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 low mileage, looked yeah. after, full service, because I, I messaged Adam, he's like, no, full service history. This is almost like, and a, it, it is a good thing, look, right? So this is a bearing out of a rod. If I hold the part in line, look at what the heat has done to the bearing. So they're equal at the top, look. Yeah. And it's taken the elasticity out of the bearing, because obviously when you push the bearing in it, you compress it. And it's actually completely deformed the bearing. Sort of warped, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so very, really, really strange. Really strange. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I've consulted my book and it literally says oil degradation. Um, I, I don't think it's overheating. It's not overspeeding. It's not that kind of wear when you overspeed an engine with low sort of oil lubricity, you get wipes. Whereas this is like, this looks like corrosion on a bearing almost, which is why we were like, oh, is it, is it moisture? But I don't know. I don't even think it is a mystery. Yeah, but it's done it consistently on all of them. Consistently. So it is a bit of a strange one. Anyone's got any ideas or has seen it before, let me know. But yeah, it's like, um, it's almost like a cavitation, like, a, like the oil's broken down almost. But. And how did this present when it was brought? Uh, 3,000, 2,000, 3,000 RPM knocking noise. Right. Like a tapping noise. Yeah, and it's basically, it's rod knock. So, yes, not good, not good. Don't see it, really don't see it. It's not like they're bloody BMW V8s that knock rod bearings out for fun. So yeah, we've got to sort this out now and start to put this back together. But we're doing oil pump for a matter of course. We do oil cooler because there's swarf. If there's any swarf, it'll get caught in the oil cooler. Strip, it, strip everything, clean it. And yeah, it's a good one. But you have a full I, team I, behind you, sir. I don't know why I've got, thanks for my warm milk. Let's well, not that's get not in. That's, one that's of pretty the, good. That's one of his better ones. What the f is that? It's <laughs> warm. <laughs> and milky. I had a cold one earlier. <laughs> Honestly. It's very long. That's Thank how you. far I've got to reach. <laughs> how was Japan? It was very Japanese. Is it? I haven't seen you for like three weeks. I haven't no, missed you at all. It's been great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, both I timed of us, that perfectly, yeah, so yeah. I come back and you were gone. Yeah, you come back in on Tuesday and I went there. I'm like, how can I both maximise our, this time away from Rick? Both of our quality of lives increased, improved. No, it's good. It was really good. Tell us what you saw then, run through the, the list of tuning shops. Uh, GTRs. Lots, just, of lots of GTRs. It was heavily Nissan based because all the guys I went with have got GTRs. So I was a bit lonely there. I just pretended your skyline was mine. <laughs> it's not a GTR though. No, it's, it's you enough. were made to sit with dinner on well, your own. I was with the poor GTSD yeah. people. Oh, um, I <laughs> <laughs> Bet none of them have got a super sport bike. That's true. No, uh, what did you go? Nismo, Top Secret, Tom I. Tom was Top Secret? Top Secret wasn't the best because they wouldn't really let us in. It was that top secret. Yeah, so you're not allowed to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Here's the waiting room. We took room. a photo outside. Now leave. I think they get a lot of people turning up there. Do they? It's one of the biggest, like one of the most well-known ones. So they get a lot. Obviously, they're so trying to, it it's like being here and they're trying to work and they've got all these people turning up. Wow, I say you guys try to work. That is loose. They have people there. Loose. They work. <laughs> yeah. They have employees. Yeah. The full car the park says, you guys don't work. Um, and did you uh, have a nice hire car? I did. I had a Granada RFA3 GTR. Did you? Not a GTS team, GTR. Did you? It was a bit ropey. It, it seemed better days. How long did you have that for? Three days. Did you? Did you do donuts? No, because I was a bit worried it was going to break. Mm. It was making a lot of noises nice. that it shouldn't make. And it had a bit of a misfire. <laughs> but we just powered through. drove through the misfire and it seemed to get better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it seemed better days. But it Robbed was... me any bits? No. I, all, all the other guys were buying spare suitcases and bringing bits back. Were they? Mm. And you didn't do that? I didn't do it. Didn't even message me to say, do you want me to bring you this? No. no. There was lots of bits. Bring me any, did you come back with any Honda bits? I did. I brought, <laughs> I brought bits for my car. <laughs> <laughs> I brought some Mugen bits for my car. 
You did won. you really? Yeah. What did you get? It's like an oil cap. What? <laughs> I didn't have much room in my luggage, so. And yeah, full a, carbon a, bonnet. Mugen badge. But it's not Mugen. No, but. So you bought Mugen badge from non Mugen Honda. Yeah. It'd be fine. Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly. Right. Yeah, I think we need to sidestep this quickly. On that note. Before the piss taking continues. So. But you had a nice time. Yeah, it was good. Now you're back to reality. Yeah, I might go back to Japan. Why? Because you're the tallest person I there. I was, yeah. It did work well because I had my red motor coat on. So then <laughs> the, the other group just used me as like a, as a beacon because I'm like two foot above <laughs> everyone else. Oh, I'm glad you had a nice time. It's a very long way away though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flight is horrendous. Yeah. And with your non leg room. Yeah. Did you not turn left on a plane? Uh, no, they, oh, I tried, but I was on an aisle seat, but every time someone walked down the aisle, they just walked into me. Yeah. yeah. Did you not like try and get a bump, an upgrade or something? Yeah, yeah it was a thousand pound. Was it? Each way. I bet now, though, you're wishing yeah, you had done it. There's a lot of money out. It's all right. But just so you can say, you turned left on a plane. That is an Instagram moment for your seven followers. Yeah. <laughs> Which is all of us and your mum and dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, worth it. Turn left on a plane. <laughs> the plane I went on, you can't. It was an A380, so it's like the biggest plane they do. But yeah, yeah still it's not a dream, much room. Dreamliner, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's triple seven. In economy, dreamliner. there's still no room. Saturday bills. Yeah. I turned left on a plane when I went on EasyJet flight. It's because <laughs> I went on at the back of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, I think we're all caught up with Carl's escapades. Yeah. Mm. Carl, bring you back an oil cap. <laughs> That you could have bought in Halfords. <laughs> did you declare it when you came through? Yeah. Did you? I declared well it. Well really. done. Good boy. So did all the other guys with their yeah. full suitcases of parts. <laughs> like when I took a £60,000 gearbox to Israel. Anything to declare? Nope. <laughs> it still rumbled me. Seriously, all that way for an oil cap? Yeah. I don't, I don't need anything else. Really? And my car's not JDM, is it? Well, it's not it's Japanese. Not Jap- it's a Japanese car, baby. It, it isn't. It was it's, built here. It's made in Swindon. So. <laughs> It's the least Japanese car. Yeah. So literally, you could have gone to Swindon Alphas and got what you needed. I could sold like loads of the white Civic Type R's over there, and I'm like, these were built in, in Swindon. Swindon. <laughs> <Ship> to Japan. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Hand built by Fred from Penhill. Mm. Yeah. Special edition. Nice. Yeah, special edition is his bits missing. <laughs> Question corner. Oh, what was I going to say to you? No, it's gone. Question corner. Uh, Pete Tasker, hi Ricky, here's a question for you. Braided brake hoses, worthwhile upgrade or pointless car jewellery? Um, no, they're not pointless. Um, I would question whether anyone would feel it really on a car because the servo assistance takes away some of the feel. I would say you'd feel it if your brake hoses are really perished. On a bike, it's huge. It is big, to be fair. Um, uh, and essentially what the braided hose does is it the standard hoses are normally like rubber with a nylon weave and then rubber so they under extreme pressure they can expand and then as they degrade they expand under brake pressure and when you do go to a braided hose it gives some of that firmness back um so i wouldn't say we do loads i wouldn't say we do loads and loads um but we probably maybe do two, three sets a month. We put braided hoses on, like R8s and stuff. Mainly it's something that I would say people would do when they go track, they take them on track. And then along with like Motel RBF 700 brake fluid. Um, yeah, they're not pointless car jewelry. They do serve a purpose, but they're only as good as the brands you buy. So like we use HEL uh, on the bikes and on the cars. Um, I would just probably say on a car, you've got to have pretty good feel to feel it um versus on a bike whereas there's no assistance uh but i would say if you are replacing hoses then it's a good it's a good thing to do rather than go for like a you know you could go to some of these car warehouses and buy cheap replacement hoses you can go oem by the time you bought a full set of four from oem you probably get a decent set of hgl brake lines all the way around so yeah it's, i mean we do like I said, we do them. Um, I did them on my R8, so yeah, it's not um, it's it's not a uh, witchcraft or anything like that. It is a it is a decent upgrade. It is a decent upgrade. Uh, Micah F900. 
Uh, great video as always, love the banter as you guys work. Question, when you're installing the spark plugs on the Skyline engine, you did not use copper slip. Uh, is this a misconception that helps from removing plugs? No, you don't, you shouldn't use any grease or anything. Ultimately now, spark plugs come uh, with, uh, they're like self-lubricating material on the threads. Um, but what happens is if you start plastering copper slip is you remove the conductivity between the plug and the head because ultimately the plug grounds through the head so this is why you can have problems where spark plugs are corroded in heads or you know if you've got poor thread material or poor plug material you can get issues where the plug can't ground through the head properly so yeah we don't use any um we don't use any copper slip no grease no nothing they go in just put it in dry to the hilt tight as it'll go not tight as it'll go. It's not possible, is it, no. to take it seriously? No, um, because I got a lot of comments on the Skyline video uh, because they were like, oh, you didn't get the plugs, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And it's hard to show everything, but the plugs we put in the Skyline video that day are not the plugs that are staying in it anyway, and we gap everything. Because on performance stuff, we make the gap smaller. So, yes, what you don't see doesn't necessarily mean I haven't done it. Uh, but, yeah, plugs in dry. Um and always make sure the seat, especially plugs where, well, all plugs are, but you, now nowadays the plug has a crush washer on it. So you just have to make sure the seat in the bottom of the plug hole is clean as well. So we've got special brushes to do that. So yes, it's, um, you don't need to, you don't need to slap them in copper slip and none of that crap. Uh, the Baron OG, uh, are there any plans with a B8.5 RS4 van at the back? Y yes, I've got to fix it. <laughs> but like everything else in this bloody place uh, customer work comes first so it's got I think it's done a rod bearing much like uh, Adam's R8 over there so I think we'll end up pulling the heads and it'll have a rod bearing gone um, it doesn't uh, did it make a noise? I think it made a tapping noise I think it was making a tapping noise but if I'm swarfing it and I've just literally said we don't run it we don't start it it's got to come apart it was swarfing a filter could be lucky and it could be a chain guide but i'm just going to say it's probably a baron uh, i had someone interested in buying it um and they sort of undenied around for a little bit because you know if it'll go it'll go but yeah ultimately i'll get it fixed and drive around it for a bit so that's the plan um because it is lovely it's got carbon ceramics it's got pano roof it's, full, it's loaded isn't it? it's a it is nice a, spec it is a nice it's one it's a great color as well it is sapang yes so it's just having the time to bloody do it i've got to do skyline first so and obviously there's the the tt as well uh yeah and i want to try and get that done for nobles yep i have keys juden that's all right um Soapbox, where's my soapbox? Someone said we should make Merchant RE Performance soapboxes. That's a great idea. That's a good idea. If anyone makes wooden soapboxes, give me a shout. We'll have to buy some, and we'll put them on the website. Put RE Performance logo on it. Um, this week's rant. Uh, Fine-in tuning companies. Ooh. Yes, another company has been done. So the first one was AET. Yep. This one is really contentious, and I am gonna, sort of go on a bloody rant about it so this was poor sods down at onyx 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 yeah. in reading and the judge's words were they weren't satisfact satisfactified they weren't satisfied <laughs> that the business had done enough um to ensure the car wouldn't be driven on the road yep so this car was i don't know whether it was decatted but it I had pops and bangs map put on it by the tuner and because that makes the car illegal, um, decatting the car makes it illegal. And what they're saying now is pops and bangs maps uh, are noise emissions and you're, t you're taking it away from homologated standards, which is difficult because a lot of cars have got pops and bangs anyway. They're saying that from a legal standpoint, tuning companies need to do more to be satisfied that the car will not be driven on the road. Right, so basically, if you come to us or you go to any tuning company now and you say, oh yeah, I want a stage two or I want to pop some bangs, you've got to trailer it away. So that is like saying the barman that serves you a load of booze is responsible for being satisfied that you didn't go home and batter someone. There you go. That's a good analogy. How, how, 
how is it my problem that you drive your car in an illegal state? It's not. I don't know where you're going with it. I don't do what you do with it. That's in the same way like we make them twin turbos or we do this or we do that and you do 100 mile an hour at the bottom of the street. Oh yeah, you didn't ensure that they were going to use the car legally. It's a load of bollocks, right? And this is the problem with this snowflake world we live in where we've got to keep some bureaucrat happy because, oh, well, you, you need to stop them doing that. No, why should I stop you doing it? It's like they'll stop racing next. Oh, people could get hurt. Oh, poor them. So it's, it, it, it pissed me off because it's like, that's a small company, right? What did they get fined? Like five grand, didn't they? It was a fair whack, yeah. Um, AT got, got fined like seven and, a, seven and a half or something like that as well. Where did the burden of responsibility ever fall on the business owner of how an owner uses their car? So here's one for you then. Car comes in. So if anybody takes a car away from an MOT center that has failed its MOT and the car kills somebody, is the MOT center going to jail? Is the guy who runs the MOT center going to jail? Is the MOT tester going to jail? How is the burden of responsibility on a car that doesn't meet the requirements of the law a business owner's who has worked on the car? Do you see, do you, like, yeah, let's good, take good it away point. from the tuning side of it. So now I've got to do what? If I, I mean, we don't really do that kind of work anyway. We like the stuff we do is like, we, yes, we change exhausts on cars. So have I now got to get people to fill a form out to say they understand the car doesn't is moved away from, you know, being it's legal. Original. Yeah. And I've got to ensure that they take it away on a trailer. So what's to stop them literally driving off my driveway on a trailer, getting to the end of the driveway, unloading it and driving down the road? What's the difference? So I kind of start to get my back up a little bit because the government take the piss out of business owners anyway. So the foot, like, it's £1,800 a month in business rates. So the cost to of running your own business in Swindon for the size of my business is £1,800. I don't get my bins emptied for that. I don't get anything for that. That is just the cost. That's a tax. And now they're coming after business owners who work in the motor trade because they're doing things for customers who are then choosing to use it on a road that are illegal. And it, it's... It's just a joke. It is a joke. We live in a ridiculous world now. How is that the burden? How is the burden of responsibility? That you, 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 do you know what I mean? Yep. I, th I think some of the some of the issues with that is the the, the pops and bangs maps has got such a a big thing at the moment. And it, it is. You know, it's not our thing. We've said no. That. It's a, look, like luckily or fortunately, I just don't work in that realm. Yeah. But when I look at it, it's no different to a bar serving someone alcohol and then them going off and doing something stupid. How is that any different? Yeah. What you choose to do as a grown ass adult is on your, so, okay then. So if that business got charged five grand, what did the owner get fined? Yeah, yeah. What did the owner get fined for choosing to make their car illegal on the roads? Are they banned now? Have they got six points on their license? Have they, because everything's publicized about the owner, about the business that did the work. Yeah. Where's the judge? Yeah, if you search it up, the judge's words were they were not satisfied that the business took enough precaution to make sure a car wasn't. That's a cop out. Well, here's one then. So you can go to certain shops and you can buy. <laughs> I know where you're going. Something. Paraphernalia. To, some paraphernalia. Yeah. You might call it hydroponics. Yeah. It might be something like that. Yeah. Now, is that shop now going to be. Yeah, because they put word in it, weed in it, instead of backy. Yeah. How do people get needles? Like for jacking yourself up, where do the needles come? Like, you can't go to Sainsbury's and buy a pack of 10 needles. Do you know what I mean? And then, they, honestly, mate, I, I don't understand the world we live in where people's choosing to do something stupid is someone else's responsibility. We said this about Dieselgate, didn't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the same, like, oh God, honestly. So, for business owners who are out there, who are tuning cars and stage two in cars or putting pops and bands maps on it, get your invoice signed, 
get a disclaimer signed and make sure they're taking it away in a trailer because they're coming after us. Like it's hard enough to make a living in this bloody country as it is. Yep. Honestly, government just take their fucking piss, don't they? Mate. That was a big one. Yeah, it, it just annoys the, sh annoys the shit out of me. Because you work hard. Like this is going off. Like I, I got three guys. So I sit here and I go, right, I got four mortgages to pay. That's how I take it respons responsibility wise. And they pay them their wage and they earn bloody hard for their wage. But as a business owner, for every pound I pay them, it costs me one pound thirty, because it's I got to pay their national insurance, their tax, their my side of their tax, and their pension and stuff like that, which is fine. That's cost doing business. Then the then the council go, oh yeah, we want our business rates. So there's this. Then you've got to have certain types of insurance. So between my business rates, which are eighteen hundred quid, my insurance is two grand. My rent is another three and a half. Do you, do you know what I mean? That soon adds up, mate. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's it. Without take away the niceties, like my dyno is on finance, so I pay eighteen hundred pound a month for my dyno. You know, I've got a couple of diagnostics tools and stuff like that. But just opening the doors has a cost. So yeah. then, for someone to be out there now, so what happens if I like, I don't know. So now, if I, I suppose it, engines and stuff like that, or what happens with when you're selling turbo kits and where? Where is, what is the boundaries for making a car illegal with tuning work? Is yeah. it just emissions? Do you see what I mean? Where do you draw the line? I mean, you get people with the wrong tyres on the cars. Yeah. What about the stretched tyres that a lot yeah. of the guys in the scene are doing? Yeah, yeah. One or, of those, let's go. Or, or then like, they'll say, oh, as long as it's got 1.6 mil a tread on it, it's fine. That Ferrari and that dyno, the rear tyres are 2003. How is that, Lee? How, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Then you've got other things like buying cars off Copart that are written off. Now, I've seen work out of professional workshops that I wouldn't drive. But when cars have been smashed up, why, is it, why are we worried about people tuning cars, yet there is no control over the motor trade? There is no control. You could be a bookkeeper and turn around tomorrow and go, I'm going to start up a car workshop and be allowed to work on cars that already at the minute kill more people per year than any other mode of transport cars are the biggest plane crashes helicopter crashes anything that moves cars kill the most yep. and we let muppets work on them there is a harder word but i won't say it. do you see yeah, yeah do you know what i mean there is no licensing there is no control the only control we have in the uk is that it has to pass an mot yeah right that means nothing it means no passing an mot means absolute jimmy riddle because half of it is they're either you can go to some mt centers and they're lazy bastards right you can go to some mt centers and you leave some cash on the seat and they'll pass the mot you can go to some mt tests some places and they don't even put it on a ramp do you know what i mean and that is because it is run by a business where they're rewarded for throughput so the only way to have an unbiased controllable in check of integrity of your car is like how germany do it tuv test yeah. which is run by the government right so you can build a kit car at home and you've got to go for an sva test right you can buy a car that is bent in half off copart and there's no checks there's nothing we had a car in the other week that had been crash damaged and the customer's complaint was uh noise when driving so we put it up in the air and the four-wheel drive shaft from the front of the engine to the diff was hitting the chassis, was hitting the prop tunnel. And it's because it had had a rear ender and it had snapped the engine mounts and moved the engine forward on the engine mount. So it was on an angle. So the front four-wheel drive shaft was hitting the chassis, right? And we were like, this is bad. Yeah. So we went through it. Customer was here, went through everything, right? So it, what had happened is it, something had gone into it on a rear left, hit the engine, moved that round, snapped the rear, snapped the lower arm off, and on the R8, the aluminium, the aluminium frame rail along the bottom, it's got four, for each mounting point, it's got four metal aluminium extrusions that are fret, that the screw threads that obviously you screw the lower arms to. So it snapped one of those off, clean off, right? So there's no thread there. So all they'd done is put a welded an aluminium plate back in, put a stack of washers, drilled a hole in the other side of the frame and nut and bolted it. <laughs> nut and bolted it. Well, 
And I'm like, I showed him, and I, I'm like, where did you where did you buy this? He goes, oh, I knew it was a cat because it obviously comes up in HPI. But there's no test. There's no checks. Yeah, there's yeah. no nothing. They're not allowed to move under trays, remove under trays on MOTs. So you can't see anything. If you have got a moderate supercar, Porsches, you can't see anything. You can't see anything. So there's no, there's no fair way of checking whether that car is road legal, right? And it's, it, you know, I'll be, for, like, we're good friends with Matt, and that's his, that's his niche, isn't it, buying crash cars. But you've got to be fair to him. Every car he builds, like he's Simon, a friend of ours, who works at McLaren has just done his 720. So he'll build it and it will go to the manufacturer to be inspected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they give him a list of problems, right? Which is, which is a responsible way of going, my car's legal, my car's not road legal. Yeah. But how many other people out there are not do, uh, trying to make a quick buck because you can buy cars cheap, smashed up, you buy a shitload of secondhand parts off eBay and then you bang it on. So there's no, all this money is going into trying to catch out people who are putting pops and bang maps on their cars, but there's no regulation on the trade. Yeah. You, like, honestly, it's a joke, mate. It's a joke. It doesn't matter how hard you work to be a good, to, to do a good job and to make sure cars are safe and responsible. There's so many shitheads out there working on cars that I wouldn't trust with a Meccano set, yet you put your wife, your kids, your family in it and you do 70 mile an hour down the road. Puts it into perspective, dude. I think so. What have they done? How much did it cost them to take Onyx Performance to court for five bags? Yeah. Do you, like, and the, uh, what is it? The head of Voss has come out and said, we're thrilled with this convic conviction. Oh, what a parking warden. Go off and do something proper. Go and find cars that are belching out black smoke down a motorway. way. Do, do you know what I mean? Just two companies. That is, that is what they've, so they're either coming after more of us or they're literally doing a tick book set, book exit. They think that's gonna stop pops and bangs maps yeah. when you can go on eBay and get Fred in a shed to make you a pops and bangs map that you can put on your car on your driveway. What yeah. happens when that? Do you know what I mean? Where's the conviction of the owners of those cars that have wanted to do that? Why does it, why is the burden of responsibility the business owner? Why is it not the owner? I get, I get, I do, do you know what I mean? I'm not selling cocaine here. I'm not selling drugs. I'm not doing anything illegal. If you choose to use it on the roads, because that driveway where I keep all our cars is off public roads. If you choose to take that on a road, so the motocross shop that sold this to Jordan, if he decides to ride that down a road, can we go after can we go after them because they've sold it and they haven't taken because this is for motorsport use only this isn't for green lane in or this isn't for going down the fields right so this is for off-road motorsport use only so d are they responsible now that jordan decided to ride it down the road if he did he hasn't but do, do you <laughs> see what i mean yeah yeah i go i my race bike off omg if i drive it out of here and drive it down the road. Is Paul responsible because I've chosen to use an illegal vehicle? It's not legal, but it's, it shouldn't be on a road. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you, yeah. Why is the burden of responsibility of the business owners? It's yeah. not. If you choose to be a dickhead. Mate, honestly, it baffles me. Absolutely baffles me. Right. I need something stronger than tea now. I think we might need to go. Uh... I, I don't know. Am I, am I at, uh, am I, have I got this wrong? Have I got this wrong? Let us know in the comments. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we've got customers that go to like Wiltshire car cruises and stuff like that and they do burnouts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is that, oh, mate, Is that your responsibility? I can just keep going. Yeah. I can keep going. Yeah. When you do a burnout, the tire smokes. Is, yeah. is that Michelin's fault now? Because the tires smoke and that's, a, honestly, I'm baffled, mate. Oh, genuinely baffled. I feel for them two companies. I really do. Because it, how is it? I don't understand how it's the business owner's responsibility that you do something, that you choose to use the car in an illegal fashion. Lads just raised a good point. Uh, Hurricane's got pops and bangs maps. The R8 Gen 2 has. You said Mini has as well, it? Or BMWs have got them. Um, 
the Coopers, the s 3s they've all got pops and bang maps. From the factory? From the factory, OEM, right? I, I, can, I can understand people who say, why would you want to decat a car? I can, I can understand that. There is, a, there is a tuning aspect to that. It, at the end of the day, air in, air out, so whatever you can help there. But I understand the emissions thing of it being made, you making it illegal by decatting the car. I can understand that. It's still not my problem. If you choose to do that and drive it on the roads, that's your problem. Um, yep. Although it being proven now it isn't. But how do you regulate the pops and bangs? Yeah. Because I, I am not joking. What is it now? 77 dB? 78 dB is a noise limit for car on a road? Right. Not a chance, right? I know they say they get through static noise testing. I bet they wouldn't get through a dynamic noise testing on a downshift. No way. Because no, my car wouldn't get through Donington on a noisy day and that had a stock exhaust on. That was the R8. That was the R8, yeah. 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 I had factory sports exhaust on, was completely road legal, as homologated. I never changed a thing, and I would get black flagged at Donington, down start finish straight on a dynamic test because of downshifts. Yep. So how does that work? Where's the measurement? Where's the, where's, what's the measurement of that? And where's the consistency yeah. as well? How are OEMs allowed to do it and we're not? So let's say we didn't tune it, we didn't put any more power in it, we just put pops and, pops and bangs maps on it. There's no homologation code for that. There's no homologation code to say that's got pops and bangs, that hasn't. Yeah. So you stand there with a policeman and you go, no, it's got it as standard. Has that happened? Have you been pulled over for pops and bangs and it had it from factory? Do you know what? I think some of it is also, you know, if some young guy has done it on his Fiesta ST, then, oh, naughty, naughty. But some wealthy guy on his Hurricane. Uh, Would well, it even get looked at? That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and that's, so where's the measure? Yeah. Where is it? Because it, let's say it is an 18 year old kid and you can get some of the STs and stuff like that with P and B's. Yep. Where's it? If he stood there with an officer who thinks they know more than what's, do you know what I mean? Because every policeman thinks he's a murder trade expert. What's the, where does he turn around and he goes, uh, like you've seen them videos of guys getting pulled over in Teslas. Oh, well, you're using your iPad. No, mate, that's the controls for my car. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Where's the, where's the measure? I struggle with that. I struggle with that. Let us know if you get pulled over by the Rosas, be it P's and B's, what happened? P's and B's? P's and B's. That could be a new range yeah, of yeah, merch. Yeah. yeah, P's and B's. Pops and bangs. And you would literally have yeah. some P's yeah. and B's. And B's. Penis and balls. <laughs> I'll have a penis and balls map, please. <laughs> Secret code. I don't know. Maybe I'm taking this too far. But... Uh, fun you, stealers. If you want to explore this image, this uh, sorry image this issue a bit more, yeah. you should come to one of the car shows. <laughs> come to a me. car show, or I tell you what, come to mine and Al Fagan's live live podcast on the t Monday, twenty fifth of March. Monday, twenty fifth of March. And ask a question, and I will happily rant away with him. Al will be like that. <laughs> podium, podium place, Newbury. Yeah, thirty quid a ticket. Link in the description below. Come along, say hello. It'd be a good night. It'd be good to see you all there. I say all of you, there's 30,000 subscribers. We can't fit that many. <laughs> Just 100. 100 will Just do. A hundred. That's all I need, a commitment from 100 of you. Come along. If you like bikes and you can make it, yeah, it'd be good to see you there. And we'll talk cars as well. It will, yeah, yeah, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of everything. It's obviously, this is something that Podium have asked us to get involved in. So obviously, you know John and Tracy at Podium really well. And we've wanted to do a podcast for a while, haven't we? Yeah. So it's obviously on the podium with, that's the series we're going to do. I am your host. I'm a cracking looking guy. The hostess with the most Yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly that. Bad looking than Kate's latest crush anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we'll try and get guests on. So obviously Podium really like the bike thing at the minute. They want to attract more bikes in, so we get Al in. We've all spoken about doing one with Al for ages anyway, haven't we? Yep. So that'd be cool. But yeah, we'll try and get more people in. Someone said Mark Marquez. I don't think I have got that pull, if I'm <laughs> honest. Um, but yeah. Get just... your people to speak to his people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My people wouldn't even know who his people are. <laughs> so however cool that would be. Yeah. Yeah. I would say some words to him, like getting involved in the 2015 championship with Rossi. That is basically what that interview would turn into. It it's me sitting there for two hours telling him he's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to win the GP championship this year. So I'm going to get tea and okay. cool off and put my soapbox away. Let me know if I'm out of whack or if I've got it all wrong. Let me know if you can make me soapboxes. 
and we'll see you at Podium.